Hi, NPI brought to you by DigiKey. Thanks, DigiKey. This week it is worth electronic. Hey, Data, what is Ion MPI this week? New product introduction. Okay, people are going to love this. This is like a classic uh, comeback. Um, this week it's the worth electronic IC LED. You'll be like, man, that looks really familiar. That looks just like a NeoPixel. Well, you're right. Um, worth LED, uh, sorry, Worth Electronic now has their own version of the high quality NeoPixel compatible IC LED. It's um, four different shapes of LED sizes that have RGB diodes in them, plus their own IC that they designed um, inside that then controls it using a one wire protocol um, that has, you know, the Manchester coding similar to what, you know, I call NeoPixel, but some people say is, you know, WS2812 compatible, et cetera. Um, lots of library examples work with it. So I are good to go. And I'm actually really glad to see this because I've had a lot of contacts from industry say, you know, I want to add NeoPixels into a product. And I'd always say like, uh, I don't know if I would do that because um, the supply isn't really trustworthy. It's great for hobbyist products, but I don't know if I'd ship it into like a finished good that costs more than like 10 bucks. Um, just talk about the history of these uh, LEDs because I still see products that use PWM drivers. So um, look, if you have a microcontroller that has a lot of pins and uh, each one of them can drive 10 milliamps, you can of course connect your RGB LEDs, uh, one diode to each pin and PWM them with a timer. Um, I've absolutely done that myself. But the minute you get into like more than two or three LEDs, you might want a driver. So this is uh, the TLC 5947, which is a classic, um, uses SPI input with like a latch, and then it will do the PWMing uh, with constant current, Oops, sorry, with constant current for up to eight RGB LEDs. Um, and they can also do it at high voltage. And people still use these. I see these are used in automotive a lot. Um, you know, they're, they're also great for people to breadboarding. You can see like here, you just, because they're constant current, um, you don't need extra resistors. You just plug in the LEDs, um, you give them power and you can chain these. You can see there's input and outputs on either end. So if you have, if you need more LEDs, you just chain them together and then you just send more data. Um, so we've had this for, you know, many years and, and people used them and loved them, but the chips are kind of big. They're not inexpensive. I mean, they're great quality, um, but you know, you have the cost of the LED plus the cost of the chip and the chip is, is kind of big. So if you need a small PCB size, uh, you're kind of out of luck. And then like in 2011, um, you know, basically the invention of the smart LED chip came about. And there's a chip, you can see it in the middle there. This is a 14 or 16 pin SOIC. You can connect two RGB LEDs to it and then you send it a chained SPI data with two data pins, or maybe it was three data pins. And um, no, I think it says two, yeah, two digital pins um data and clock and then when you finish the clock you know you, you send a long clock pulse it latches and you can connect as many as you want so they're chainable and they're you know what's nice is that you can very easily chain them they're very small and they're very inexpensive um and the protocol is really simple so this was a big improvement so people started making like led strips and stuff with them and then um the next generation a couple years later like a year later was the ws811 which yeah, you can see here is these old floor RGB pixels. You'd have the chip on the back and then the LED on the front. And these were SOIC 8s, so much smaller than, you know, all these other previous chips. And they used a one wire protocol because like, you know, called again, NeoPixel or WS2811 compatible. And then you could chain as many as you want. So this was even smaller, less expensive, um, and, you know, could, could do one LED per. But then the real brilliance was that when um, companies invented the idea of putting the, the chip inside the LED. Um, so, you know, by integrating it together, you had, and this is like, you know, the original, you know, WS 2811 or 2012, it's got six pins. Um, nowadays you see the four pin version because they got rid of, um, the extra power pin. And then there was a, uh, I think there was a speed pin they got rid of. Um, but by putting the chip inside, uh, your build materials now got a lot simpler and a lot smaller. You could just put these LEDs anywhere you wanted, connect power, ground, and then chain the data wire along. The problem is, um, and I've dealt with a lot of these in my past, is there's a lot of different companies making these 
you know, compatible NeoPixel like chips. And um, I've definitely had issues with some batches where I'd get like a bad batch of LEDs in a reel. And, you know, if one LED is bad, like you can't rework them. They're really hard to solder, really hard to rework. You pretty much have to toss the PCB or do like a very intense, you know, rework job to try to get the LED off and then solder a new one on. And they do not like to be hand soldered. Um, so it's a lot of work. It's a real pain. And um, bad LEDs or rotated LEDs, you know, happen happen pretty commonly. Um, also, you know, you have to keep them very dry. It's very easy if you overheat them for the LEDs to crack uh, during rework. Another thing is, you know, they can um, fail in uh, in the field. And if one NeoPixel fails, all the ones after it fail. So it's like, very noticeable if you have like one bad LED. Because even if you have like a thousand, only one fails. If that one thousand is in the middle or the beginning, the entirety uh, stops working. So having a good quality, reliable, tested, traceable LED vendor for smart LEDs is a really, really good idea. So definitely I would recommend if you want to use these kinds of LEDs in a product um, that will go to people and is like more than just like a little throwaway toy, um, use the worth LEDs because they actually come specified. So um, there's four sizes. There's a five by five millimeter, I think 2.5 by 2.5 millimeter uh, side angle and the two by two millimeter tiny one. Uh, those are my favorites. Um, the the real advantages like i said is reliability solderability they have um, they don't cheap out on the contacts um they don't cheap out on the the potting for the led um so you don't end up with um one bad batch like ruining your entire build um these are the shapes and sizes in rendering the protocol is like i said it's it's compatible with um you know most neopixel fast led implementations you can see the timing. They specify their timing. You know, they they did their chip from almost certainly they did the chip from scratch. So um, their timing is guaranteed for the silicon. It's not going to change from batch to batch, um, and it's you know well tested. Another thing I really like is um, they will quantify their luminous intensity. So instead of just being like, okay, each batch might be different. Who knows? Like some are more reddish, some are more greenish. They're like, no, we will we will actually publish specifications. Um, for the dominant wavelength and the luminous intensity min and max. So you know you're going to get um, a consistent LED with Rojas reach, at halogen, and photobiological safety all certified and ready to go. So it's not like some mystery supplier. Um, data sheets also have uh, great package diagrams. Uh, there's CAD models for all of the LEDs as well. And uh, this is like the two by two millimeter one, which I really like because it's like so tiny. It's great for adding indicators. I use it all on my feathers. Um, and this is a feathering that they made. I will show the video uh, demonstrating like very high pitch, high density with only one GPIO pin used. And they're in stock. They come in reels. You can pick up right now. They have a thousand stuff. They had more, but they actually sold you know, a bunch out. You can order from DigiKey and they'll get them from worth for you. Uh, you can get them in a reel. 3,000 pieces per reel. Um, you can get them in DigiReel if you like as well. All right, we have a video. Yep. You will see the display is going to go to scroll through, or the LED is going to scroll through the whole display. This is our um, simple test on the functioning. Now, as you see, we included some logos, some scrolling text. If you see, we have a feather stack with the sensors and the Bluetooth module. This is our mic controller. So whenever we change the direction of the board, the text is going to uh, be in the same direction. This is not going to change. Now, when scrolling over, oops, uh, there, there. <laughs> so you will see the uh, rainbow scrolling through the board. We also have the price tag included. As you see, it's not only uh, fixed text, text uh, it can be also dynamic text. We go through the next animation. 
Some emojis, for example, can be also displayed. Now we're reading out the information from the sensors in the sensor board or on the sensor board, as you see. You have the humidity, relative humidity values. And here is the Bluetooth module. So the LED or the mic controller is going to read out the information. It's going to keep sending this send BLE data. And when the data is received from our Proteus Connect application, then you will see uh, the text is going to change. Hi, I'm MPR.